Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rob, and one of the things we've spent a lot of time on here in our home theater is trying to get the audio processing just right. And because the processor is the heart of your audio and video system, it's always a struggle trying to find a good balance between the cost, performance, and features across all of the different options on the market. That's why today we're going to be taking a look at a processor that's actually been out for a while, but we think it's a viable option as far as high quality home theater processors go. We've been using the Emotiv RMC1 for about the last seven months, and in this video we're going to be going over everything we like, the things we don't care for, and give you our thoughts on whether or not it's worth considering for your system. So with that said, the RMC1 is Emotiva's flagship surround sound home theater AV processor, which is currently retailing for $3,749 on their website, though we've seen it as low as $3,200 on sale which is actually a pretty good discount over the original $5,000 price tag, making it one of the most affordable 16-channel processors on the market. But the RMC1 is an older model, so just keep that in mind. Now before we go any further, I just want to thank Emotiva for sending this processor over to us for review. We've had this processor in for a long-term review period of about seven months, and it's been really nice to have that extra time in order to evaluate the unit so we can let you know any problems that we ended up having. To start with, let's go to the front of the unit where Emotiva has kept everything pretty simple. With their signature brushed aluminum faceplate and blue LED lighting, along with this really cool status display that spans across the entire unit and gives you readouts for important things like your system volume, AV modes, and more. I really like the large central volume knob that acts as a control stick. You can just push it up, down, left, right, or in, and navigate the settings without the remote, which is a pretty convenient feature as well. Beside that, you also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a USB port, a 3.5 millimeter audio input, and of course, a power button. On the back, the RMC1 has a ton of connections, and the biggest thing here is the 16 balanced XLR ports for hooking up as many as 15 separate speakers and one subwoofer, two of which can be remapped for use as either height channels in a 15.1 setup or as two extra subwoofer outputs in a 13.3 setup. So the RMC1 is really giving you a lot of flexibility in this regard. The other noteworthy feature here is the eight independent HDMI 2.0 inputs as well as two outputs, one of which features HDMI eARC using Emotiva's latest firmware. There are a lot of other really useful connections as well. Starting from left to right, we have connections for AM FM radio antennas, three RCA stereo analog inputs, a stereo pair of balanced XLR inputs, a digital audio output with four digital audio inputs, each with a TOSLink and coaxial connection. AES and USB digital audio inputs, a network jack, infrared in and out ports, and finally four trigger ports. You also get three spaces reserved for adding expansion modules along with an AC power socket and a power switch. Now I know that seems like quite a bit, but the most important thing for most of us is going to be those HDMI ports and XLR outputs. One thing you may have noticed is the RMC1 doesn't have any RCA outputs for connecting amplifiers or subwoofers, which means you'll have to get XLR to RCA adapters for any gear that only supports RCA connections. The other thing I need to point out is the fact that the HDMI ports are limited to only HDMI 2.0, which in 2023 really sounds kind of outdated, and for the most part I agree. HDMI 2.1 has been out for quite a while now, and there are a lot of lower end receivers that we've actually reviewed which have already integrated true HDMI 2.1 and got it working pretty well. But since this is an older model and it came out at a time when HDMI 2.1 wasn't nearly as stable and widespread, Emotiva chose to go with this more reliable standard instead. Now with that said, the RMC1 Plus is probably going to be coming out sometime this year, which features a ton of upgrades over the RMC1, like 8K HDMI 2.1 on all of the outputs, Enhanced Dolby Atmos and DTSX Pro decoding, IMAX enhanced, improved power supplies, and a lot more. But I'm going to have to assume here that the new models will cost more money as well. So if you're okay with the older technology, the RMC1 is still a really good bet. The vast majority of movies are still being released in 4K at 24 frames per second. So we think the RMC1 is just fine strictly for home theater use. 
But if you want to do things like game in your home theater and you have a high refresh rate display, you might be looking to upgrade somewhere down the line. I also just want to quickly mention the RMC1's remote, and honestly, this thing is ridiculous. It's pretty much a solid bar of aluminum with these nice machined end plates, and it even has metal buttons. I also like the battery door on the back since it's magnetic and it just clicks onto the remote. Unfortunately, the remote is kind of big and not very ergonomic, but in the end, I use a Harmony remote, so it wasn't a big deal for me. So with all the features sorted out, we went ahead and set up the RMC1 in our AV rack so we could get started with the testing. And I personally really like the looks of the RMC1, especially when paired with the Emotiva amps like we have here. I'll be using this processor with our Emotiva UPA1s to power the front, left, right, and center channels. Each one of these amps provides 200 watts per channel, which should be more than enough power. For the rest of the bed layer speakers, I'm using an XPA5 amplifier, putting out 200 watts per channel. And for the four Atmos speakers, I'm using a BaseX A5 with 95 watts per channel. As far as sources go, I'm using a Sony UBP X800 M2 to play back my physical media, as well as a Zidoo UHD 5000 and an NVIDIA Shield Pro for local media streaming. And for the video side of things, we've had this processor connected to a lot of different projectors throughout our time testing, like the BenQ HT4550i, the Bowmaker Polaris 4K, and my old Panasonic projector. But for most of the testing, we've been using the BenQ. And honestly, I was really impressed with what the RMC had to offer. We listened to a bunch of different movies and TV shows throughout the time we've had this processor from lots of different sources like Netflix, Plex, and our own Dolby Atmos Blu-ray collection. Which brings us to what I feel is one of the best things about this processor, and that's the sound quality. And I have to say right up front that this is one of the best sounding processors that I've experienced. Now part of this may have to do with the fact that Emotiva equipped this unit with really high quality individual DACs for each channel. And this is usually something that you would only see in really high-end processors. After setting it up, we noticed excellent channel separation. The vocals from my center channel sounded notably better than what we've been accustomed to with our other processors. And I didn't find myself having to adjust the volume between dialogue and action scenes, which can happen with lesser processors. The bass also sounded really good, which I think is mostly due to the bass management options in the RMC1. Having three separate sub outputs was also really handy for adjusting subs precisely to our liking, and it should prove useful for getting your multiple subs balanced in your room. The RMC1 also did an excellent job placing sounds around the room accurately, making the whole experience more convincing. Watching movies like Spider-Man No Way Home, which already has a great soundtrack, the RMC1 really stood out with great separation in the Atmos channels, which added quite a bit more immersion. Now, there were some things that made the RMC1 feel a little outdated, though, like the very basic user interface. While it is really powerful, offering all the usual settings like speaker levels, distance, crossover, and very capable multiband parametric EQ, it just doesn't have the polished look of some current offerings from other companies. Considering the fact that these days you can find inexpensive receivers with nice graphical setup menus, this older text-based menu just lags behind. That said, there are more setup options here as well, since the RMC1 also supports room correction through Dirac Lives. Now, we are usually pretty skeptical of automatic room correction due to our past experiences, Oftentimes, microphones and software bundled with these components just don't make for a good result. But at the same time, we were pretty excited to try out Dirac Live for the first time. And to do that, we went ahead and hooked up the Emotiva Dirac Live kit. Now, this is basically a little box that talks to your processor and your PC or laptop over the network to send Dirac Live data between the two. Emotiva also provided a little network switch, some Ethernet cables, and power adapters to get everything hooked up. So we went ahead and set everything up according to the instructions, but unfortunately we didn't get anything on the processor showing that Dirac Live could be enabled, and the Dirac software wasn't detecting the processor. This kind of stumped us for a while, but after some troubleshooting, we noticed the lights on the Ethernet ports of the included switch were not on. Luckily, we had a switch that we weren't using that we tried in place of the original one that came in the kit and everything worked fine, so we were able to continue with the setup. Now, I'm not sure how often something like this happens, and because the switch was more than likely provided by a source other than Emotiva, 
it's probably not their fault. But when something like this happens, it can be a huge inconvenience, so we felt it was important to let you know. With that said, I'm sure Emotiva will do whatever it takes to resolve any problems that you might run across, so keep that in mind if you have any issues, and hopefully nobody else will end up with a bad switch. Once that was done though, the process of calibrating our system was actually pretty straightforward using the Direct Live software. After doing a basic level calibration, we went with a normal width EQ configuration, which meant that we had to measure 13 different points around our listening position. This took about a half an hour, and once the measurements were done, we uploaded our new reference curve to the processor and disconnected to Dirac Live Kit. After that, the new Dirac settings were automatically applied so we could start retesting some of our movies. And as I mentioned, I usually don't expect a whole lot from automatic room correction, but I have to admit I was really surprised how much of a noticeable impact Dirac had. I feel like it really cleaned up the sound in our room and it revealed some new sounds that I hadn't noticed before in certain tracks. But by far the biggest difference after applying Dirac was the bass. Since the processor has control over these three separate subwoofer outputs, the Dirac profile was able to tweak the subs more precisely while still being really tight and impactful, which is generally what I prefer in my system. If I had any complaints at all, it might just be that the center channel ended up being a little too quiet which made dialogue more difficult to hear in some scenes. That's pretty easy to fix though by upping the center channel output level. So as far as Dirac Live goes, I'm really happy with how it performed and I'm impressed that it actually brought such an improvement to the sound quality. With that said, there were some issues that we ran into during our time testing the RMC1 that we feel should be addressed. First thing that we noticed was an occasional odd noise that would get sent through all the speakers when starting a paused movie. How loud it would get depended on the volume that you had your processor set at. So if you watch your movies at reference levels, this can get pretty annoying. Now we don't think it would be something that could damage your speakers, but we have heard of others having the same problem with Emotiva processors, so we don't really think this is an isolated incident. And those are pretty much the only issues that we've experienced after seven months of using the RMC1 with the gear that we have on hand. In fact, other than the issues mentioned, the RMC1 has been pretty much flawless. And the problems that we noted aren't really deal breakers for us, but in the end, you're going to have to decide whether these issues would keep you from considering this processor. In our opinion though, coming in at just $3,750, the RMC1 is a really good processor that I personally feel can't be beat when it comes to the sound quality, especially at this price point. Now of course, I haven't heard every processor out there, but I can't imagine sound quality getting much better than the RMC1 unless you're willing to spend quite a bit more money, and even then I doubt it would be a huge difference. So if you're in the market for an excellent processor that you can get at a great price right now, we feel the RMC1 is a solid choice if you're okay with the features it offers. But if you're looking for a future-proof solution that will support the latest technologies, then you might want to hold off until the new RMC1 Plus comes out but we can't say for sure when that will actually happen. And with that said, it's time to go ahead and wrap up this video. Let us know what you think about this processor. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.